something is happening in our world. The world is all messed up. Nation is sick. Trouble is in the land. Confusion all around. We have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls. has barricaded the world with hate. Our knowledge has made us cynical. We think too much, feel too little. We live in a state where the I think our society is run by insane people for insane objectives. If, if anybody can put on paper what our government and the American government, etc., and the Russian, Chinese, what they are actually trying to do, you know, and how, what they think they're doing, I'd be very pleased to know what they think they're doing. I think they're all insane. But I'm liable to be put away as insane for expressing that. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. A dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street. There's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe, and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel belt and radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. This nation was founded by men of many nations and backgrounds. It was founded on the principle that all men are created equal. And that the rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. Today we are committed to a worldwide struggle to promote and protect the rights of all who wish to be free. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. Few will have the greatness to bend history itself, but each of us can work to change a small portion of events, and in the total of all those acts will be written the history of this generation. Each time a man stands up for an ideal, or acts to improve the lot of others, or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. And crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current that can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. So we're saying give peace a chance. We're not thinking in terms of 10 years. We're thinking in terms of peace forever, you know. And uh, everybody's talking about now, I want peace now. We can get peace now if we want it now. All we have to do is awaken the power in the people.
the people are unaware. It's like they're not educated to realize that they have power. They put the politicians in power. They vote for the local mayor. The people do it. But the system is so geared that everybody believes that the father will fix everything. The father being the government. The government will fix everything. It is all government's fault. You know, bad, shake a fist at the government. Well, we are the government. The people are the government. The people have the power. Few are willing to brave the disapproval of their fellows, censure of their colleagues, the wrath of their society. Moral courage is a rarer commodity than bravery in battle or great intelligence. Yet it is the one essential, vital quality for those who seek to change a world that yields most painfully to change. And I believe that in this generation, those with the courage to enter the moral conflict will find themselves with companions in every corner of the globe. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. So let freedom reign. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom reign. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom reign from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. War is a game that's gone too far, you know. It's just like we've all just woken up one morning and thought, is it a dream, is it a nightmare, what's been going on? And we're all just trying to make the next day a bit better. What we need is not division. What we need is not hatred. What we need is not violence and lawlessness. But is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. But I know somehow that only when it is dark enough can you see the star. And I see God working in this period in a way that men in some strange way are responding. There is an indefinable, mysterious power that pervades everything. I feel it, though I do not see it. It is this unseen power which makes itself felt and yet defies all truth because 
it is so unlike all that I perceive through my senses. It transcends the senses. That informing power of spirit is God. And since nothing else that I see merely through the senses can or will persist, He alone is. This power benevolent or malevolent, I see it as purely benevolent, for I can see that in the midst of death life persists, in the midst of untruth truth persists, in the midst of darkness light persists. Hence I gather that God is life, truth, light, He is love, He is the supreme good. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, The kingdom of God is within man, not one man nor a group of men, but in all men, in you, you the people have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Something is happening in our world. The masses of people are rising up, and wherever they are assembled today, whether they are in Johannesburg, South Africa, Nairobi, Kenya, Accra, Ghana, New York City, Atlanta, Georgia, Jackson, Mississippi, or Memphis, Tennessee, the cry is always the same, we want to be free. We're selling it like soap, you know, and you're going to sell and sell until the housewife thinks, oh, uh, well, there's peace or war, that's the two products. Peace, it's to try and get people orientated to think peace, like eat for peace, breathe for peace and dance for peace, and make love for peace, you know, to just have the peace like a mantra going round and round in your head. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter with me now, because I've been to the mountaintop. I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life, longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And He's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die. And the power they took from the people will return to the people. Our future may lie beyond our vision, but it is not completely beyond our control. But the work of our own hands that will determine our destiny. There is pride in that, even arrogance, but there is also experience and truth. In any event, it is the only way we can live. Well, I'm, you know, I, I'm unhappy about the world being concreted over and all well, the forests chopped down and well, the air polluted and that the fact that the planet is in the control of mad people. You know, people who are crazy, people who are greedy, all these people who are selling the rainforest and, you know, any forests, just selling it because they make some money without, you know, I'm very unhappy about that, but I have a, a long-term view, which is all things must pass. I mean, before it used to be, maybe they're going to blow us up with H-bombs. But even that, I thought, it don't really matter, 
They can't destroy what's within ourselves. Krishna said, there's no time when we didn't exist and there'll be no time when we cease to exist. The only thing that changes is the body. So even if they blew us up with H-bombs, our soul will stay in our other astral body and the only thing that won't be here was physical. So, you know, I'm sad about it, uh, the world, but I look at it from within and without. So if you want the truth, go to God. Go to your gurus. Go to yourselves. Because that's the only place you're ever going to find any real truth. I would like all of you now to take the hand of the person to the left and to the right of you. Go ahead, right now, I mean it. Don't be shy, do it, because it starts now. To the person next to you, to the left and the right, I mean it, right now. Tell the person next to you that you care for them. Tell them that you care for them. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that you love them. This is what makes the difference. My brother need not be idealized or enlarged in death beyond what he was in life. Be remembered simply as a good and decent man who saw wrong and tried to right it, saw suffering and tried to heal it, saw war and tried to stop it. Those of us who loved him and who take him to his rest today pray that what he was to us what he wished for others will someday come to pass for all the world. As he said many times in many parts of this nation, those he touched and who sought to touch him. Some men see things as they are and say why. I dream things that never were and say why not. There is a point. Is there a point to all this? Let's find a point. The world is like a ride at an amusement park. And when you choose to go on it, you think it's real, because that's how powerful our minds are. And the ride goes up and down and round and round. It has thrills and chills, and it's very brightly colored, and it's very loud. And it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time, and they begin to question, is this real, or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered, and they come back to us, and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid, ever, because this is just a ride. And we kill those people. <laughs> Shut him up. We have a lot invested in this ride. Shut him up. Look at my furrows of worry. Look at my big bank account and my family. This is, has to be real. It's just a ride. But we always kill those good guys who try and tell us that. You ever notice that? And let the demons run amok? But it doesn't matter because it's just a ride. And we can change it any time we want. It's only a choice. No effort, no work, no job, no savings of money. A choice right now between fear and love. The eyes of fear want you to put bigger locks on your door, buy guns, close yourself off. The eyes of love instead see all of us as one. Here's what we can do to change the world right now to a better ride. Take all that money we spend on weapons and defense each year and instead spend it feeding, clothing, and educating the poor of the world, which it would many times over, not one human being excluded, and we can explore space together, both inner and outer, forever in peace. Thank you very much. You've been great. I hope you enjoy it. London, you're fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much.